Hey everyone, welcome back to Ruby Live. My name is Annika and I'm your host today. And this is Branding Basics, where I help you empower yourself to create your own brand. So if you are a small business owner, a graphic designer, or someone who just started out, this stream is for you. Today, I'm gonna help you set yourself up for success using Adobe Express, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Illustrator. All three are my favorite tools. So if you've ever used any of these, put them in the chat. Speaking of, we have a live chat. So if you're watching on YouTube or on Behance, hello, hello live and replay folks. Hope you're doing good on this Wednesday when I'm streaming. But um, if you are watching this on replay, let me know. Comment down below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more branding basics and more amazing graphic design, illustration, photography, and video streams. Thanks so much for being here. Let me say hi quickly to our chat. We have Wade in the chat who is helping me mod the chat today. Hi, Becca. We have George. Um, we have Anthony, Uma, Arby. Thank you so much all for being here. And Vandal, Kunal, um, Kendall on YouTube. Thanks a lot for being here. All right. Without further ado, let's get started. I want to give you a quick insight about what Snacks is. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on um, the right screen. Yeah. Okay. So this is Snacks. If you've never seen it, we created this from scratch when we started using um, Illustrator, Express, everything else into our workflow. So today our agenda is to bring up Adobe Express. If you are a small business owner and you don't really know how to set yourself for the future, the stream is going to help you because you can use Adobe Express for free as well. So make sure to go to the link express.adobe.com and sign up for a free account. So we have Snacks, which is the brand that we were creating. If you if you join me in the first episode, you might remember the workbook that I created. I'm going to bring up InDesign really quickly. And this was the workbook that I created. I gave you insights about how to strategize to bring up your own concept. Think about what what all these things are important. There will be a link in chat in case you missed it. You can download it for free and use it for your brand. But I'm going to use this today to create a brand guide for myself in InDesign. But I'm going to use a stock template because I often feel like someone who's a small business owner doesn't actually know how to use InDesign. So if you are that person, this stream is definitely for you. Okay, so we have all these assets, but the first thing that I want to do is use Creative Cloud Libraries to help get all these assets in it so that I can use it across any application I have, right? And meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat. I don't think I said that, but in case you have any questions, as always, I have my eyes both on YouTube and Behance chat. And if not, if I miss anything, Wade can help me take a look at it again. All right, so what I'm going to do is go to my libraries panel. And meanwhile, if you cannot see this on your screen, you can go to window and go to libraries. So that's where you get the access to libraries within Adobe Illustrator, which is what I'm using right now. Um, Emily in the chat saying hello to everyone. Thank you for being here, Emily. Nice to see you again. Welcome back. All right, so I am going to press the plus button here and see what all pops up. I have a few options here, browse shared libraries, go to stock and marketplace, create new library. I am going to start by creating a new library. So click on the library button and say snacks brand. And I'm just going to give it a tag for myself so I can verify what it is. All right, let's click on create. And here we are. We're going to start building a library really quickly so that we can access this within Adobe Express. Let's go ahead and see what these assets are. So it looks like these are outlined, but in case this is a text for you and you're doing this, someone else designed this logo for you or someone else in your um, company or your team designed this for you. You don't really know how that works. You can go to type and click on create outlines right over here or you can right click and click on create outlines that way you'll just have these vector shapes that you can use across applications which um, eliminates a possibility of error so i am going to click on this guy and which is my 
primary logo. I'm going to click the plus button and it's going to give me three little options here. It says fill color, graphic or add all. Let's see what fill color does and I'm going to show you what everything, all of these options do. I'm going to click on fill color and this is the fill color that the snacks logo has. So we had the fill color in here, which is useful because we want the colors of our brand. But what if I did graphic? That's actually going to give me the artwork or the vector shapes for the logo itself. And that's what we have here. So you can go ahead, double click into the name where it says artwork one and say, um, let's just say purple lockup, purple, purple, purple stagged lockup. Okay. And the last thing was everything, right? So I still have that thing selected over here. I'm going to click the plus button again and click on add all. And just like that, I do not have to do this in two steps. I could just click add all if you wanted both the color and the vector shape itself. And then um, hitting command Z doesn't actually remove stuff from your library. So that's like a pro tip there. If you accidentally add something in your library and you wanted to remove it, or you made a copy that you wanted to remove that I have in this case, because I did the two step process and then I did the add all. I think I want to go ahead and delete this guy. So I'm going to go ahead, select it, click the trash button. And I love that the Creative Cloud applications give you this option of undoing something immediately when you're like not sure if you wanted to actually delete it. Creative Cloud would be like, hey, are you sure you actually want to delete it? And um, I did. So I was. And so I did. <laughs> all right. So that's our first logo lockup. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click here and click on add all. I am not going to worry about the fact that these are not named for now because I'm going to use this only for demonstration purposes. I have this little guy in here, which is not outlined. So I can go to object and click on expand appearance. Now everything else here is a vector shape. Let me zoom in on that so you can see. This is what we're talking about. And if I press command Y, which for my creative pro friends out there is outline mode, you can see that now that is expanded because over here there was an effect applied to it, which was making it the curved appearance. If I go back, you can see it has the curved stylized arc effect, but on top it is actually expanded. So it's actually a shape. All right. So you would want it to be having that expanded appearance. And I just selected my shape, went to object, click, clicked on expand appearance, right? That helps you. Now I'm going to go back in here, press the plus button. But now, since this is a logo lockup, which means it has a tagline, it has something to go under it, which is like complementary to the actual logo. I am going to click on just the graphic and have that in here. I think I'm going to do that to all of these as well. So I'm going to ungroup and have all these ready to go. I'm actually going to create copies of this just so that I don't actually mess it up. Um, all right, I am going to demonstrate just these. Oh, no, that wasn't grouped. All right, let's go here. And meanwhile, I know I'm going a little bit faster. So if you have any questions, again, please don't worry. You can ask them in the chat. Okay, I just did expand all for everything. I want to say um, that Emily, um, no, not Emily, Becca and Anthony are loving it in the chat. So thank you. Thank you for being here. All right, I'm going to do the graphic again. And if you are doing this for the first time, go ahead, experiment, see what colors you like, see what lockups you like. But my top tip would be having, making sure that you have the contrast. So this is exactly why we are creating the brand guideline because you're doing this for the first time, you're a small business owner and you don't really know what colors work together because you have not done this before. And it's totally normal. You don't have to get all worried up about it because as long as you maintain contrast enough contrast between the colors that you're using for the background like over here for instance i'm gonna zoom in to show you if i change this color to be white for the snacks logo it is gonna immediately lose legibility and you can see that i it's hard for me to actually read those words out whereas if this was a darker tone the contrast is much higher here and that helps me read so this is the basic principle that you would want to follow and have like a contrast checker i use this app called contrast every single time i want to check something like that okay all right and i feel like i want to add these as well there's another way that you can actually click and drag this in your library you can click and drag it in here and you see that the color of the library actually changes because i'm dragging something in here i'm going to click here and it's going to add the artwork so that's also a handy little way to add stuff in your library 
All right, and then maybe I want to add this graphic as well. This is this is how you can access these in more than one Adobe application. So just to demonstrate, I can go in here and open up CC libraries. This is Adobe InDesign. I can open up CC libraries in here and access the same library all across. So let's go ahead and look up snacks, right? We just made that. So we have, oh, wait, <laughs> this is just giving me all the snacks. I wanted my library snacks. Okay, here we go. That's the snacks brand library that we just created. And I can just click and drag it out here. And it's going to give me this right over here in my InDesign file. And I do not have to export it. I do not have to copy it. I do not have to paste it. All of these steps are eliminated by the power of Creative Cloud libraries. All right, let's go back into Illustrator, see if we want to add anything else. I feel like for now, this is enough. Maybe we can add all of these as well. So just as a demonstration, I'm not exporting all my designs here, but I would want you to do it for your brand if you're following along at home or if you are watching this at your own time. All right, so let's jump into, we're 10 minutes into it. Let's jump into Adobe Express and actually um, demonstrate how you can create a brand. So if you've never actually used Adobe Express, it is a simple little URL, express.adobe.com. If you do not have an account, it's fine. You can set up a free account or log in with your existing Adobe account. It is free. And if you are a nonprofit organization, you can get a premium subscription if you can prove that you're a nonprofit, there's some paperwork involved. Once you do that, you can get Adobe Express Premium. So I love that it is so accessible. But once you log in, you actually see this landing page, which is super fun. I love that you have everything here on the left hand side sidebar. I can click on brands in here and I have some of these already set up and ready to go. But if you're doing this for the first time, this probably looks empty. And there's only this little button saying create a brand. So I'm going to click on create a brand. It's loading up for me. And let's see. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So basic building blocks. Think of it as building blocks. This section is the Lego for your small business. Um, no copyright infringement um, intended, but just using it as an adjective. So I'm using add your brand here and it says upload your logo. But as you remember, I didn't actually upload anything in here. So I'm going to go in here, go to my episode seven. I'm actually going to make sure where where my logos are. So my logo lockups are actually in here, which is um, episode three. I go to logo lockups and I did this in episode three where I exported all the logos. But since you are maybe only watching this video, I'm going to go into Illustrator and show you how that's done. So you can do it in multiple ways. You can either do an asset export, which is for my creative pro friends out there. You go to asset export and you can just bring this panel right over here. If you want it dogged, you can have it dogged. Don't add me, but you can um, drag multiple assets in here and click the click the export button to export in one go. You can select wherever you want and click choose and voila, your asset has been exported. But if you want to go the simple route, easier to understand, easier to remember, you can also go to file, click on export, click on export for screens. And voila, this is all the artboards in the file. If you don't know what artboards are, we have amazing illustrator challenges here on our YouTube channel. So make sure to go ahead, watch the playlist. Everything will be right at your fingertips. All right. So I am going to select all these options that I have with my logos in here. And I'm actually going to, okay, it has six. Okay. So six of these are selected. Anything with a check mark is selected. I have this range over here as well. I'm going to say include bleed doesn't matter for now and choose the location. I'm going to leave this as is we're at outros. So I'm going to choose this place and it also says what kind of file you want to export. So if you wanted to explode some export something without a background, you would want it to be a PNG. As you can see over here, this does have a background color. So it's okay. It's not, it's just still going to import a export a higher quality image. I'm going to choose the scale as 1x and click on export. And I'm going to go back and show you where these files are. Give me a second. I am going to look this up really quickly. So let's go here. Um, stream assets. Okay. Let's see. Outros. That's where we were. All right. 
So this is where we are and these were the assets that were just exported. You can see that it was exported today at 314 and um, these are all the things that we exported. Didn't mean to export this guy, but this was what was exported. And these were all the files that I selected, all the artboards that I selected, right? So that's how you do it. I want to go back to my um, episode three and then logo lockups and show you how that looks like without a background color. So this is what you can export if you remove the background from the artboard itself or hide the rectangular shape behind this. So let's go to our um, file in here. And I am going to select my branding basics, episode three, and then go to logo lockups. And I have some lockups in here. Let's select this guy as our primary logo. And as soon as I do it, you have it up applied at all the places in Adobe Express, right? I don't need to do anything else. It shows me automatically how it's going to look on surfaces or branded materials. So you can um, see this is a website layout. This is a website layout. This is how it's going to look on an image. Not really legible because the image is also dark. So you want to create variations of your logo. This is a perfect example of having logo lockups and multiple variations of colors. So you would want to add more logos, but we can do that in the next step. So I want to pick my color. Adobe Express is brilliant at picking up colors from the image that you just uploaded. So it picks up this color and I'm going to hit save. That's the color we had. You can pick up your font as well, or you can add your own font. So if it is not an Adobe licensed font, you can actually go ahead. Maybe you made the font or you bought it from an external third party website. You can actually go ahead and add your font. Click on add your font button. And if this is a folder that the font have font is stored in, it's probably an OTF file that you want to upload and you can go in here and do that. But for our sake and for simplicity's sake, if you're doing this for the first time, it's completely normal to be using one of the fonts that's available in here. I want to use a Lato Bold, um, if that's how you say it. I think that's how you say it. And click on Next. All right, keeping an eye on chat again, just to make sure we do not miss any questions. Snacks DM, yeah, for sure. Okay, and the one last thing that you have to do is name your brand, Snacks Brand Live. I'm gonna name that because I feel like I've probably named it Snacks Brand before. All right, hang tight and Adobe Express is creating your brand for you. Osman on the YouTube chat, hello, thank you for joining. You're just joining us at the right time. We're creating a brand in Adobe Express. All right, so looking good. Um, it didn't actually pick up color or saved it. So I think it might be like a browser issue. Maybe I was just like on this website for too long. So let's try that again. Sometimes with web applications, I feel like this is such a normal thing to happen. Something went wrong. Oh no, let me refresh and see what happens. <laughs> just, just the things, just the things, okay. Can you add a font from your Adobe library because they don't give you the .odf file? Um, right as of now, as of today, May 31, 2023, you cannot do that because you cannot actually export um, fonts out of Adobe fonts or the Creative Cloud desktop application, as far as I know. And because they are licensed to be used with your Creative Cloud subscription, Becca, um, but I feel like that's something that's already on the user voice. So I think the team is probably working on it. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to try this again. But as of now, there is only, um, the fonts that I just showed that are available to pick up, or you can upload your own, which are not Adobe fonts. I should have mentioned that. I hope that helps you. Um, there is a user voice for Adobe Express as well. I don't have the link on handy on me. I'm sorry about that. Um, also wait, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I am going to go in here and select like a white color because I want this to be legible on other applications as well. And I'm going to do that for the other colors that I exported out and instantly Adobe Express will show you all of these available in your logo variations, which is pretty cool. I can X out of this and now I can add more colors in here. You can go in here and browse the color or you can actually go in your illustrator file and select this color in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my Illustrator, copy this hex code and go back to my um, file here, which is the Adobe Express page. Click on save and that's where we have. Okay, I am gonna go back in here. Um, I don't think, I don't think I have the link for it, but 
Sorry about that, Uma. I can share it after on my Instagram if you guys are interested. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull up a different color as well, which is a lighter, lighter shade. And over here, you can add more fonts. I know that I uploaded a different font in here. Maybe that is actually in here. Um, I did upload like a BN like a Brandon Nickerson font. I don't actually see it. Okay, we'll just keep later bold for now. And um, we have all of these, which is actually how your page or your project will look like when you actually apply these colors. Um, love it. Okay, Becca in the chat says they already voted on user voice, was wondering if it changed. Oh, amazing. So you already know what user voice is. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for voting. I also actually voted because I also want all the fonts to be available just because it's so seamless. And I think the team is probably working on it because a lot of um, people are actually wanting that. All right. So now we have all of this and the easiest way to check if your brand has been created in Adobe Express is to open up a new project. So I'm going to click the plus button here and I'm going to go ahead, click on Instagram post. Okay, so I am going to go in here. Maybe I'll just say snack and see what comes up. Um, praying. <laughs> I'm going to click this guy. It's a premium and you can tell because there's a crown icon right at the corner here. But maybe I don't like the font in here. Maybe I don't like the colors and I'm going to apply a brand. Also, Kendall over on YouTube, I'll see your question. I'm going to answer that in just a quick second. All right, so you can go over here. Now you're wondering, how do I make this cohesive or how do I actually apply my brand? By applying a brand, I mean applying your colors, applying your fonts, applying your logos in there as watermarks. To do that, there's one simple step. You open up your project here and click on the design button on the right hand side corner. Click on the design. Right now, it says something else. This is not the brand that I just created. I click on these ellipses i can go ahead click on switch brand and now i can select the brand that i just created which was snacks brand live i click on switch brand and now it shows me that oh this was the brand that you created to see what logos you have in your brand you can go in here click on logos and these are all the logos that are in the brand I love that there's a plus button in here. And if you forgot to add one color of your logo or a variation of your logo lockup, you can do so right within here. And you don't need to actually go into the branch tab again from the home page. You can just open it in your project. Super handy, super quick and super easy. I love that. Thank you so much, Wade. I appreciate you finding the link for us and Umicon as well. All right, so now we have this. And before we go any further, I want to answer the question over on YouTube. Kendall asks, um, our work in Adobe Express can easily transfer into Adobe Illustrator. Um, yeah, if you could elaborate more on that, how do you mean transfer into Illustrator? You can actually access Illustrator work in here as well. So with using Creative Cloud libraries, but how exactly would you want your work to transfer? Do you want the assets? Or um, I don't know, let me know. You can actually export your files from here as PDF and open that in Illustrator. So that's something that you can do. You can go ahead, export, click on download PDF and start download and then access this within Illustrator. If, if that answers your question, let me know. So, all right, now we want to apply the brand, right? And this probably is not the logo that we want. I can go back to my design and click on apply brand and see what, what it does. Okay, that is not what I wanted. This is definitely not what I wanted. Now, this probably is not the right um, asset for it. So I am going to go in here and say package, packaged snack or something. That looks terrible. That's terrible for legibility. All right. Uh... <laughs> Maybe I can just like find a quick little asset. I don't know. Where is my asset? Where are the assets? Okay. I guess this is our asset, okay? And I am going to delete this guy. And maybe I want to change colors of this. So I don't want um, a background or this thing in here. So I am... Oh, no. I was doing too much. <laughs> I was doing too much. Do we stress is like, stop. You're doing too much too quickly. Okay, I'm going to refresh. Kendall says, the export. You explained it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being here and asking questions. I love an engaged chat. So thank you. All right. Let me know if you have any other questions. Happy to answer them. 
all right so i think i want to replace this image maybe i'll just use like something like this which is like a darker color and i can just delete these options in here because i just want to show you how this looks with like a logo on top which is like a logo lockup you can actually go in here and replace this logo i don't want this because this is not legible so i can go in here and click on the replace button and you can't see this because this is actually the white version of the logo but i click here and it changes it and replaces it with the white version right i can scale it up and down still i can move it around if you think it's too close to the corners maybe you want to center it out and this handy little magenta color guide comes up which is built in within adobe express so you can actually place this here or in case you forgot to add a logo in your brand within adobe express you remember we created libraries in illustrator you can actually go in here to the libraries panel on the left go to snacks brand that we just created and you can add your logo lockup from in here perhaps we wanted to add this one and i want to delete this one so maybe we can bring this in here over the center all right and maybe we want to add a shape on top as well so this could make like a quick little um introductory post or something that hey we're launching snacks so come hang out um or something similar you can change the color in here you can change the fill color to the brand color so maybe you wanted pink you wanted the lighter purple or the darker color you can change the blend mode from normal which is the default to multiply which actually multiplies the values that you have of the layer underneath or you can actually do screens which does the exact opposite so i'm going to do multiply and then i want to send it behind this so i'm going to drag it under the logo so this is what we have brilliant i applied my brand within a second and i did not even need to bring exported assets within adobe express so i think that is pretty cool all right so this is how you can use adobe express but what if you had more than one person in your team and you wanted to use um have something like a guide that would help you to do it you know how you get furniture and you get assembly guides the think of it think of your brand and think of that guide as the building blocks for your brand so i'm going to go to stock.adobe.com and look up brand guide template that's what we want because you have never used indesign before probably if you are a small business owner and you don't do design for a living or for a hobby or know nothing about it having stock assets is really handy you can go in here and click on the search option say brand guide template and these are all the assets in here if you do have premium subscription though you will get much more of a variety there are a lot of free versions in here as well let me actually go do that so you can actually see what the free variations are so go to stock.adobe.com/free click on the same write down brand guide template and these are all the results that pop up the thing that you want to do here is filter it out by templates so over here we have this little option which says templates it's a radio button you click on this as soon as you do it all the templates actually pop up so you can see this is an in design file which was actually what we were using initially when we tried to see if creative cloud libraries work i can click in here and see this click on this i icon and see how it looks like maybe it matches your brand personality maybe it doesn't also see that my okay now it's perfect um so maybe it matches your brand personality maybe it doesn't but you can always change it because these are editable having one thing in mind is important where you think about what kind of license you have so even though this is a free asset this has an enhanced license i can click on this and read about my license information i feel like this is super important you always want to learn about what kind of license and attribution values you have because this is created by someone like you or me and you would want to give them credit or you would want to see how it can actually be used so this is an enhanced license you have unlimited web views you can use it in this pro in this way you can modify the asset for it to reuse you can make up to these many copies and you can um oh that's interesting up to 5000 copies would be more than 5000 copies okay so up to 500000 copies can be done with a standard license but if you want more you want it to be an enhanced license and then so on and so forth this is a quick overview of how licenses work i did go ahead and look this 
a brand guidelines brochure layout by Pixwork, which is probably an ad agency or a design agency that has created this. And I went ahead and licensed this out for my InDesign. This is a premium asset. I went ahead and downloaded this for myself. But even if you use a premium or um, a free asset, the good thing here is that now I can show you how to override the basic elements within InDesign so that you can make it your own, right? So this is what the asset was. These are not my brand colors though, right? I want to fix that. And you can do so within InDesign using Creative Cloud libraries that we actually just used. We are 30 minutes into the stream. So I want to come back to my video screen and say, um, thank you so much for being here. If you are just joining me, let me know if you missed anything or if you wanted to um, ask any questions. This is the last episode of Branding Basics and we're creating a brand style guide using a template in Adobe InDesign that I got from Adobe Stock. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna jump back in and thank you so much for being here. All right, let's go back. So this is actually the template that we're using and I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of how it looks like. This is what it looks like. We have some welcome pages. Okay, I actually do like the about us section. I do like the fact that this already has guides. So that's cool. I have um, the logo in here. I have some things in here. I have the typography. What font you're using is important, right? What colors you're using is important. Speaking of color and values, we have color and values if you're using values in your work. Um, you have stationery if you have copied stationery. I can actually go in here and show you how this works. So I can go into Illustrator again and bring up my stationery. So I did create these business cards in one of the previous episodes. So I can go in here. Select everything, press command C or control C on your keyboard. And I can bring that in here. Oh my God, it's super huge, but that's fine. Um, I always do this. I just forget like there's something known as scaling, but you can actually um, size that down. I press shift and option on my keyboard um, for my copy to center it and size it down. Okay. I think I want to size it up just like just a little bit. Okay. To match it up. All right. And I don't think I need these variations because this was created by someone who was here. So I can press command X, delete all this, press shift option command V to paste in place. Use all your hands and fingers to paste it in place. And I see that it was scaled improperly because I actually did not expand this version. So if that's something like that happens to you, you can go back to your illustrator file. We're just, we're just out here showing you the real workflow. So I can go in here and expand the appearance and also expand everything else. I am going to actually size it down just like a little bit this time and bring that back. Um, I actually paste it here. So, okay. That was not too, too bad this time, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to paste it in place. Shift option command. See, if you are working on a windows device, just press alt instead of option. All right. And this is your business card. I'm going to press W for my overprint view and see how that looks. So again, these fonts are not the ones that we're using for our branding, but it is super easy to actually change that. You can use paragraph styles within InDesign to do it. And um, before we actually do that, I want to see if there are any parent pages in InDesign that the person who created this template made. So this is the pages button, which looks like this. If you cannot see it, go to window and click on pages. If you see a check mark, it's probably there on your screen. But if you still cannot find it, click on it again, go to window and click on pages again and it'll come up. Boom. There you go. Um, love it. Clever in the chat saying, peeking in from look, happy to see illustrator with InDesign. Always clever. You know it. Thank you for being here. Save your work, you guys, if you are working, which, um, I should also save. <laughs> if you're working along, if you're working and looking, save your work. All right. Um, okay. So I am going to change this color just because I want this to be my brand. I can go in here and change the color really quickly. And I want to do that for all the other pages in here as well. And since this is a template, I don't actually need to worry about the fact that I want to make everything from scratch. I don't know how this works. It can get overwhelming every single time you do something like this. So having a template, I feel like does really ease the workflow. 
So Adobe Stock to the Rescue. I'm just making sure now that all the pages are the same color. Maybe you want this to be lighter, right? And maybe you want this to be darker. Just to give that variation. Or actually, I'm going to press Command Z. Make this white, perhaps. Or maybe this lighter color. Didn't we have another color that we didn't get in here? All right. Maybe we didn't get all the colors. It's fine. And then um, going to do the same in here. So this is how you would want to approach the template where you would think about all these things that are on brand for your brand that you're creating. I still feel like these are too much. These are like too many colors. Maybe I want this to be lighter or perhaps I want some of these to be actually be white. So maybe I can just do that. But everything disappears here. That's why I wasn't doing it earlier. But just, let's just do it because I feel like these purples are like really overwhelming and it's just too much color. Doesn't really give um, the feel or the differentiation that I want to make with something that I'm creating. Okay, so now the next step would be adding what what is this right what is this why are we creating this this is the snacks branding guideline so i have this and let's just approach it as anyone would who's using this for the first time and you want to add some information here if you want to say who it was created by press um click inside the text box and write your name in here which is my name annika agarwal hello um nice to meet you and then you can write more information that this was version one created on May 31 during the live show Branding Basics on Adobe Live. So write the information that you want. Okay. And then you can add some more stuff in here. Version 0 0.1. I can go ahead and delete that or leave that information for um, wherever I think there's an enter here so I'm gonna remove that and now you see there's this hyphen and maybe you don't know how to remove it but you're wondering if someone created this template they probably changed some settings so it does have hyphenation turned on you can go into your paragraph styles and actually see that really quickly I have my paragraph styles open right over here the simple way to actually check that would be um, I'm going to close this so I can show you how to find paragraph styles if you've never used InDesign before. Go to window and then go to styles. OK, and then go to paragraph styles. This these are all the paragraph styles in here. Now, these are for the heading text and these are for the body text. Those are a lot of styles. So you might want to change some of these. Um, to have the same, perhaps they're the same font family and that's why there's so many because the font weights actually work. In my personal workflow, I only like to use a maximum of two to three fonts, different fonts with a lot of weight. So I can use it um, to create consistency and have maximized the cohesiveness of my design. All right, so I have this guy in here and I see that this is probably um, this because it has highlighted. So I can double click into it and it's going to show me the paragraph style I have. And then I can go into my character formats. If you're doing this for the first time, you're probably going to find it hard. Where is hyphenation? Where would it be? Right here. There's this option called hyphenation. I think that it's checked. That means you are hyphenating words when the space is limited. I'm going to uncheck that. I'm actually going to check that again just to turn on preview mode so you can see it in real time. I uncheck that. And voila, we have our perfectly aligned text. I'm going to click OK. You can now make the size bigger and it's all in one line without any um, issues with the text. OK, and now you press W and you have this. I still feel like it's a little bit imbalanced. So you can go in here and change the sizing of it. It is 60 points. Maybe you want to make it 48 and click on OK. And then you want to double click this guy and bring it to the center. All right, and this, this looks more balanced than what it was. I'm going to maybe bring it a little bit off center just because I feel like that's more optically aligned than it being exactly centered. Now, this may also not be visible because this is this is meant to be for a darker background, but now I have it on a lighter background. So make sure you change these colors as well. OK, going back in here, I want to add the welcome. Maybe I want to change this text to something else. I can double click in here and say hello. 
maybe that's what we want as text and then you have contents you have the logo typography let this be because you're not changing any of this again um i have about us in here i can change the hello which can be like hey this is a brand guideline if you've never worked with snacks before you can go in here and type all this hey this is a brand guideline for snacks if you have never worked with us before please use this as a standard for how you apply our brand logos and visual imagery okay and then share it with everyone who is using your brand have it saved in a folder or a location that's accessible with everyone who's using your brand and then have this information of course this is very very um tiny you would add more information here about what the brand is something like that here and then we're going to jump into about us so remember how we populated our workbook i want to add what this brand does so i can go in here and see what this is so what are the key aspects of your brand i can go ahead copy this text and i want to paste this in here so let's go ahead and paste this and actually i want to paste it without our without my formatting so i can actually go and press command y which is going to bring up my text editor and then i'm going to paste it there and here you go oh let's still paste it my editing edited settings that's fine i can just go ahead and select this guy later so i'm going to paste this and then select this paragraph style which is essentially the paragraph style that we used it's so weird how it's just applying the same paragraph style let's see oh is it saving it that is so weird was this it i think i'm selecting the wrong the fact that there are so many <laughs> paragraphs of this probably was not the right um right file for uh demonstration it's fine fine it's fine okay cool all right i see you um pj in the chat but i don't want to showcase that just because i'm trying to do this like for more accessible audience um all right so you can just type that in there and worry about it later okay you can just type it in here so you can type your information and then paste whatever you have pasted in a text box not a file so i can just open text edit or something and um open a new document have that information and then change the font to be the default font and then you can paste that information here all right hope they um hope that helps All right, so I am gonna go in here and use my logo now because I am introducing my brand and I want to add a logo. So I want to delete this guy in here, and I want to go into my logo. Um, I do not see the darker version, so maybe I want to go back to my Illustrator file and add that in here. It's so weird that I don't see that. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it was named, and that's why I couldn't see it. <laughs> that's so weird. Okay, where's my name? Okay, here we go. All right, and then I want to add that in here, like so. And here we have. I'm gonna press W. Okay, I don't actually love the look of this, but we'll see how that looks in the end. And here is where you can. This is a frame that's already created for you in this template. So maybe you want to add like an image that represents your brand imagery. So I'm gonna go back to the brand imagery that I had like found on the internet that matched my. um branding we found some waffle stroop waffle images some of these um maybe this one kind of matches it so i'm going to go back in here and open this within so you have this in your finder window or your explorer window you want to bring this and drag it out in here and it is super big and you have a control bar right here you want to auto fill auto fit it or you can actually go ahead you can do a multiple types of fits inside the frame you can click on fit frame proportionally you can click on fit content proportionally you can do all of these options and see which one works for you i feel like this one kind of works maybe this okay or there is a content aware fit as well which i think is working the best all right or you can actually go in here and this hand tool appears i want to bring it up like so maybe i want to drag it out to the right so that there's some negative space on the left as well 
All right, I feel like this, this kind of works. And then over here is where you would populate your information. So moving on, now comes the logo. What I mean by this is having all the variations of your logo. This is where you would populate all the logo information that you have. So I have um, all these colors, all the light and dark versions. And I have this created within Adobe in, um, Illustrator that I want to bring to InDesign. And again, the key thing here is having Creative Cloud libraries and having already, already everything set up. And we have all of these colors in here. We have the light version, the dark version, the variations, which is the primary. So maybe we can copy paste it in this case and bring it in here. And this is super big again. I want to scale that down just like so. Love that PJ in the chat giving pro tips for our creative pro friends out there um, saying that they typically name number the styles for hierarchy. That's amazing. Yeah, I got this off a template of Adobe stock and this is not how I name it. But um, that is actually a great way to work. So I appreciate the pro tips in chat. All right. So I am going to go in here and zoom a little bit. Press command plus plus or control plus plus on your keyboard. And I'm going to delete these files. Um, delete this thing in here. And of course, you can go in here and edit this. So maybe you can say um, logo primary lockup. And you can move it in here and align it to the left. So that's something that looks like this. And then you can do so with other variations as well. Simply go ahead back to your Illustrator file and bring this in here, paste it. Again, this is super big. So I want to scale that down. Press shift um, and hold option as well to drag it smaller in the center. And we have that in here. Maybe I want to size it to the same size. A quick fix for this would be having frames already in place. So you would want to go in here, have a rectangular frame, click the tool and create something like this, right? And you have this frame. And now when I go in here, remember that I ha already have this in my clipboard. So you can right click and say paste into and it's going to paste it in here. And then you can do content aware fit again or um, scale to fit. That works better in this case because this is not an image. It's it was having a hard time finding the vectors. Or if you are a creative pro out there, friends, you know the you know the shortcuts, right? Use all your fingers. Create um, hold shift option command C, and voila, we have our scale to fit proportionally. All right, having a frame actually really helps immensely with something like this. So that's a pro tip right there. Have have frames, okay? Have have some frames. All right, I am gonna remove this just because it feels very different from who we are. Okay, so these are some variations and then you can populate this with other logo lockups in here as well. So perhaps there is this darker version that I can use. So I'm going to bring that in here. I'm going to scale it down again and then I want to delete all these from here. And then I can bring this guy right over here. I'm going to scale it up a little bit and we have this guy right here. Press W for overprint view just to see how that looks. I am going to say this just for my sake. And you can go ahead and say, use these colors. Um, and this is just tell your audience, your people, your company, your partner, how to use your logo. Okay. So we have these variations. This is the first step. So giving an introduction, what your brand is to people who've never used it before. We covered contents and we did the color in the center. Now we want to create this, which is essentially showing variations. So this is the full lockup that we just actually pasted. So yeah, I'm going to go in here and create a rectangular frame. So let's create a frame in here. I'm going to move that up and I'm going to say paste into, and then I am going to press all this, um, press all, all the little buttons okay and then i am gonna move it up just like so so i can delete all this select all this hit delete on your keyboard and voila we have the full logo lockup right here and then these are the color variations which is probably the primary color over here you can essentially um actually show these versions so maybe i have these two so i can go in here and maybe size that down just a little bit so i can actually paste it in here um and then I can size it down. I can actually get this guy here again. Wait, did I not hold shift? I think I held shift. That's fine. Okay. And then you can actually have the dark version or the black and white version if you have it. 
or you can have this version as well so you have these two colors in here sorry about that that was really big so you want to scale scale it down proportionally okay so i'm gonna paste it in here again and then you can go in here press v on your keyboard hold shift and option to drag it out and you have these options i am gonna I'm going to press command C on my keyboard just because these two are the primary and then I'm going to paste it in here um, like so. All right. And then you can go ahead and align this towards the end. So I'm going to press W and I feel like these needs need to be a bit bigger to match the sizing. And you can go in here and play around with all these while you are working okay and over here with the light and dark versions so i want to delete these guys and i'm going to bring this up here so this is not the primary lock up now this is a light version so you want to change that um or like a color variation you can just say this is a logo color variation and ideally you would want to have all the primary colors first um so put that in here first okay i am gonna size this up to match the sizing and then bring this a little bit further down to increase the spacing between these two. Okay, and make sure that all these spacings are actually same um, between these guys and the guides that are within InDesign kind of help you with all of that. Okay. Um, Umukon says, press all the little buttons. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool, yeah. I say that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Got distracted by chat. All right. So you have this set up now. And now you want to add the images, right? So elements and image variation name. This is where you would... I think there is there is another imagery section. But if not... Okay, let's see if there is an imagery section in here. Okay, no, there isn't. Let's jump into... Im Wait, was there an image section here? Example image. Okay, that's like how you would use a logo with your image. But in this section that we are just creating now with the images background, you would actually add your brand images. So I have my brand image in here. I am going to just drag it out in here. Okay, and I'm just going to drag all these images. I'm not sure if these are the right images that I want to use in this case. But just for time's sake, we're doing. So this is how you would drag your images out. And then you can maybe move it up or like so. So whatever your brand imagery is, you can essentially go in here and use that with your brand guideline. Now comes typography. A quick and easy way to do this would be having Illustrator open right here and having these the typography that you are actually using in your brand. I think it is somewhere and I showed how to set this up. This file is so huge that even like scrolling it, uh, scrolling around it is like causing so much, so much lag with Illustrator. Um, all right, there is no typography hierarchy in here, but you would want it to look like this. So if I have this as part of my typography or the paragraph styles that I'm using, I am going to go in here and say plus, and then I can go ahead and say paragraph style. So this is the paragraph style that I have, and you can go in here and add that within, apply it within your file. So have the text box selected and you can select the paragraph style and it's going to change it to the same paragraph style that I had in Illustrator, which is pretty cool. So once you have decided what fonts you want to use, you can go back and watch the replays. Um, there will be a link in chat where you can find all the replays to branding basics, where I showcase how to use typography in your branding. You can go in here and um, select that just like how I just demonstrated. All right, so once you have a typography set up, it is recommended to have like showcase how it actually looks. So you can go ahead and write all. Um, sorry about that. I'm going to make this bigger. Okay, you can go in here and name the font that you're using and then you can write, hey, this is a primary typeface. And then again, just like how we did it right now, you can select the text box. You have that paragraph style selected. So maybe this is the paragraph style again. I am going to go in here or a character style. If you're just changing a few characters, I can go in here and I can just select this paragraph style. So if I select this guy, you see the plus icon because it's super big for this size. So you can't really see it. Here we go. It was really big for this space. So now you want to change it. You want to go to your properties panel right here and you want to change the size which is like 260 right now. 
I'm going to change it to like 60 and here we go. Press W and you have this again. You would want to change it to the font that you are actually using and which is BN um, bungee clean. All right. And just like this, you would want to change everything that we have in here, the colors, and you can simply go in here and select the colors from your library like so. And voila, we have the colors changed. We want to add the stationery, which we did initially. You can add your iconography. So maybe if you have some illustrated elements in your design, something like this, or maybe all day, every day you have um, perhaps some illustration work that someone created or you got from the stock. Like for instance, you have this guy, you want to paste it in here in the elements tab and I'm going to bring it smaller so you can actually bring this in here and show that this is what we're using in our branding. And just like that, you would want to showcase if there are any spacing around it and any image examples and how you can use it. And that's how you create a brand guideline using a stock asset from Adobe stock. This was the last episode of branding basics. And I am so thankful that you all could join me today and for all the other past six episodes and one plus one, including today's. Thank you so much for being here with me both on YouTube and Behance. You guys are such a pleasure to work with. I love this community. There are all the replays and we have a great new episode of Office Office hours. Wow, couldn't say that right. Office hours coming up next with Andrew Hawk Rattle and Nick Longo. Up next, so stay tuned here on Ruby Live. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch all the replays. It's all the fun in here, you guys. And if you have any questions, as as always, um, get at me at A-N-I-K-A-G-G. All right. I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay creative. I'll see you with um something new another time. But until then, I'll see you. Bye bye.